Hello to all fans of physics, astronomy, and other exact sciences. I'm Andrei Shchetnikov, and today we're going to talk about what parallax is, and how astronomers measured the distance to the stars closest to the sun, and why in astronomy, alongside the unit of distance known as a light year, is another unit used called a parsec, which stands for parallax second. So, let's start with the phenomenon of parallax. It's very simple. You can do this experiment with me right now. If I haven't done this before, I take an object, for example, this marker, and I look at the opposite wall behind the camera, where I have some pictures hanging. I alternately close one eye and then the other, and I see how the marker shifts against the background of the pictures, moving left, then right, left, right, left, right. This is what is known as parallax shift. Yes, actually, the word parallax comes from Greek and means a change that occurs alternately. And why does this happen? It's actually very simple to explain. Here I've drawn two of our eyes. And the distant object is the marker, which is significantly closer to the eye. And when I look with one eye, I see the marker against one spot on that distant screen. And when I look with the other eye, I see the marker against a different spot on the screen. So, it seems to me that when I alternately open and close my eyes, the marker on that background shifts. So that's the whole explanation. The phenomenon of parallax was first noted from a scientific perspective by the ancient Greeks. And Euclid wrote a special work dedicated to this phenomenon. It's called optics. But this is not the kind of optics we're used to. Here, the same question is being discussed all the time. It's arranged one way, but when we look at it, it appears to us differently. Because of parallax, the link will be below, you can check out this translation. And the Greeks, based on the phenomenon of parallax, were able to measure the distance from the Earth to the Moon with quite high accuracy, using several different methods. And again, we have a video about this, the link is below, I highly recommend you check it out. Already in the 17th and 18th centuries, people, again based on the phenomenon of parallax, were able to measure the distance from the Earth to the Sun, which is now called one astronomical unit, and it turned out to be 150 million kilometers. And we have a video about this as well, the link is again below. Now, the idea of measuring the distance to the nearest stars was discussed by Galileo, and it's exactly the same as in my marker experiment. Here is our planet, the Earth, which revolves around the Sun in its orbit. So, some very distant stars will act as a backdrop around its path. And here is a star that is closer to us. So then, when the Earth makes its annual orbit, this nearby star should also shift against the background of the distant stars, describing, well, if it's at the pole of the ecliptic, a little circle. If it's in the plane of the ecliptic, then it moves back and forth along a segment. Well, in principle, it's all essentially and fundamentally the same. And if we carefully observe and precisely measure this annual and predictable shift of the nearby star against the background of the distant stars, then we will be able to determine accurately the distance to this star, expressing it in astronomical terms of the distance from the Earth to the Sun, which is a known value we already know. The idea is simple and clear, but it turned out to be very difficult to implement. And this task was accomplished independently by three astronomers in 1838. Also in 1838, this was Friedrich, also known as Vasily Yakovlevich Struve, who worked in Derbt, now Tartu. And he measured the parallax of the star Vega, Alpha Lyrae, which we see overhead in the evenings during autumn. The second astronomer was Friedrich Bessel. He worked with the star 61 Cygni. And the third was the Englishman Thomas Henderson, and he measured the parallax of Alpha Centauri, working in the Southern Hemisphere. Well, they found that Struve's parallax for Vega was about 1.8 angular seconds, and Bessel's parallax for 61 Cygnus was around 1.3 angular seconds, while Henderson measured the parallax of Alpha Centauri to be just over one angular second. From the first swan, from the first swan, from the first swan, Bessel's parallax was around 1.3 angular seconds, 
while Henderson measured the parallax of Alpha Centauri to be just over one angular second. Well, according to modern measurements, it's a bit less. So now we need to understand what this angular second actually is. And to visualize this, I'll take a coin with a diameter of 2 cm and a radius of 1 cm. Centimeter with a radius of 11 cm with a radius of 11 cm. And I'll ask, at what distance do you need to look at it to see that radius at an angle of 1 angular second? Well, if it were at an angle of 1 degree, then the distance would be 360 degrees divided by 2 p. That's about 57 degrees. And since we have not a degree but a second, we multiply it by 60 once for one minute, and then multiply it by 60 again for one second. So 360 divided by 2p multiplied by 60 multiplied by 60. So it turns out to be about 206,000 times greater than the radius. Well, the radius is one centimeter. A hundred times that is a meter. A hundred thousand times that is a kilometer. Two hundred thousand. Two kilometers. From a distance of two kilometers, you need to look at this coin to see its radius at an angle of one angular second. And Struve had angles that were almost ten times smaller, which is like trying to look at a coin from a distance of twenty kilometers. These are the kinds of angles they had to measure. It's clear that all of this is very, very complicated. And so, the distance to Alpha Centauri turned out to be 200,000 times greater than the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Well, in terms of order of magnitude, with all sorts of clarifications. And this is the distance to the closest stars. Well, now let's convert everything into familiar units. So, the distance from the Earth to the Sun, one astronomical unit, that's about 150 million kilometers. The distance from which this astronomical unit is seen at an angle of one second is one parsec, the parallax second, which is 206,000 times greater. And we get 3.1 times 10 to the power of 13 kilometers. 10 to the power of 13. Kilometers times 10 to the power of 13. Kilometers? Well, naturally, we compare it to a light year, which is just under 10 to the power of 13 kilometers. So, one parsec or one parallax second is 3.26 light years. These are the distances to the closest stars. And in conclusion, it should be said that in modern astronomy, using the Hubble Space Telescope, Parallaxes have been measured down to one ten thousandth of an angular second, which corresponds to a distance of 10 kiloparsecs. And with the help of radio interferometry, when two telescopes located on different continents work together, parallaxes are measured down to one hundred thousandth of an angular second. The distance corresponding to a hundred kiloparsecs is already the size of a galaxy. And we'll talk about how distances to even more distant objects are measured in the next videos. For now, share your thoughts and questions here under this video. And thank you for your attention.